What's going on guys? Welcome to another deck profile. We are looking today at the red U7 Goku list and as you saw from the thumbnail of the video, we are including Victory Strike in this list. Um, the reason that this works out very well is because the deck is going to automatically go into our 8-drop Sun Goku Ultra Mastery. Um, normally this is like a game closer or a way to help us clear boards um, later on turn 4 uh, when you're playing the deck normally. But in this variation of it, we are just playing this card in order to swipe a card from our opponent's hand as well as go into Victory Strike. Um, Victory Strike doesn't see any play at all. Um, the card is not great. It's a 45k beat stick uh, that if it does land will end the game, which is fantastic. But getting into it has never been really easy. Um, there weren't a lot of targets for it. Uh, there's really only one target for it, but now that we have this 8-drop uh, Ultra Mastery Goku, we can then go into Ultra Instinct and uh, clear the game out. So taking a look at the list, we have our leader card with the uh, burst and draw one effects. Um, the point of this deck is not to take your opponent's life, okay? We are not using the battle cards and all of our skills to swing and deal damage. Um, we want to keep our opponent's hand size as low as possible so that they do not draw into blockers, essentially, uh, and combo power so that they can combo out of our victory strike swing. So our leader on the front side, <clears throat> attack to draw, not good. We really don't want to do that. So we want to awaken as soon as possible because on our backside, we don't have to attack to draw cards. The effect of our leader is a burst three, draw one, and discard one. Very, very good for what we're trying to do here. Um, we do need to get U7 cards in the drop area, so we are playing a lot of U7 battle cards. Um, we also have a bunch of extra cards in the deck to help us play out defensively. Uh, there will be one extra card, Catastrophic Blow, that the only reason it is in the deck is to put it in the drop area. So if this card is in our opening hand, we can use our leader skill burst three draw a card and then we can discard the catastrophic blow it's a really easy discard um the card does nothing for us in this entire match uh it is solely in the deck to be used for rival seeker um rival seeker is a u7 card so if it goes in our drop area totally fine by us but in order for rival seeker to proc for all of its abilities we have to have a multicolor extra card in the drop area so if we do, this card becomes a 10k combo power for free starting on potentially the first turn of the game. Uh, that gives us a lot of defensive power to combo out of swings if we feel like we're kind of being pressured really hard. So yeah, we play four Rival Seeker and two Catastrophic Blow. Very small engine, still fits in with the overall concept of the deck. We have all of our generic U7 support that you would play in the deck. Uh, 4, Sign of Mastery, 4, Ultra Instinct, 4, Frieza, 4, 17, 4, more 17, Super Combo, uh, and then we have 2, Kaioken, and 1, Exploiting Weakness, just to kind of round it out, and then 3, Vegetas, um, the Vegetas are kind of important because they allow us to swing and apply pressure with a crit swing that forces our opponent to combo out, and if we're not attacking normally, um, they're either going to take the hit and just ignore it altogether, or they're going to combo out of it because they really want to keep cards in their hand. They want to have that hand advantage when they take damage from our other swings. So if we are forced to swing with our leader, that will give our opponent a card in their hand. If we don't swing with our leader, then we're hopefully swinging with the Vegeta. Um, but other than that, all of our other attacks are hopefully going into unison cards to help clear unisons off the board. Um, or they are being used to clear the board of battle cards um we do have a lot of potential to clear the board however way we need to uh sign of mastery goku first card on the list limit play one so we can do this once on our turn once on our opponent's turn sparking seven uh it's a counterplay that when it comes into play negs something by 15k and if it negs it to zero and clears it off the board then we draw a card so it's a potential cantrip that we just put on board and it's a 19k body. Um, we force our opponent to clear it. If they don't, we use it to swing at their battle cards and at their unison. Uh, Ultra Mastery, 
We're playing four because we don't want to whiff it. Uh, we do want to see it in our hand at some point, and worst case scenario, we have to use our leisure skill to pull it from the drop area and put it into our hand. But we want to be able to do that for like a super combo or something to give us more value on our victory strike swing. So this card, if you don't know what it does by now, it does a lot. Deflects, double strike, dual attack. Um, we really only want to use it as an evolved target. And also for this uh, Sparking 20 effect, when this card attacks, your opponent reveals their hand, choose up to one card with an energy cost of 7 or less and discard it. So this is any card that costs 7 or less. Um, you can target secret rares with this, you can target all their negates in hand, you can target blockers, super combos, anything that's going to prevent you from winning the game with your victory strike swing. The dilemma that we have with this is that it takes four energy to get out, um, but we do only need 10 cards in our drop area for this effect, while we need 20 for the uh, rip a card effect. So when we play them out, we'll neg something by 35k. Very, very important. Uh, it does kill basically everything that doesn't have barrier, uh, except for maybe a secret rare or two, but that's not a big deal. Once we do that, uh, we do have to swing with it. And this is the scariest part of the swing, is that we are possibly giving our opponent uh, two cards into their hand that we have no idea what they are. Uh, but we are using the uh, knowledge to rip a card from their hand and then go into victory strike because this will restand and we'll get a second attack. So this is a good way to understand where we're at in the game before we go in with our uh, game ending finisher. Golden Frieza, for one energy, uh, we can play it out and it'll neg one battle card by 15k. Very strong. Um, it's, it's cool. The best part of this card is that it's a dual attacker, so if we do need to swing into unisons for one energy, we can potentially clear a lot of 15k unisons off the board. Um, this does become a problem when we have to swing into 20k unisons, like Majin Buu for blue, but um, our Son Goku does have Deflect, so if it does need to hit the board, we can do that. The problem with Majin Buu is the minus one on it. Uh, when we swing with the battle card, they can bottom deck that card. So if they target Ultra Mastery with that, it's no good. It defeats the whole purpose of our strat. So we have Android 17 here, which is uh, one of the best SRs for the deck. Uh, when this card attacks, look it up to three cards from the top of your deck. Add up to one Mono Red U7 card among them from your hand to, to your hand and put the rest at the bottom of the deck. Card is good, card is bad for this. Um, we're using it for the double strike so we can help clear unisons off, but we also want to kind of search, pull out our super combos, pull out our 8 drop Gokus if we can. Uh, we do get to play it for cheap if we have 5 U7 in the drop, but it cannot touch our awakened power. The biggest dilemma with this deck is that you have to draw into your awakened power. Um, you, you can't fish it out with stuff. Uh, except for one card that we'll get to, it's an extra card. So Android 17, heating the call. Uh, if this card gets milled, you can play it out. It's a 5k combo power, and then you mill the top card of your deck. So it's uh, an additional mill, which is pretty nice. And then uh, when it's played, you draw a card. So it gives you the benefit of putting another card in your drop area, as well as adding a card to your hand for potentially free. Never mind, I take that back. It's when it's played from your hand, so you don't get to draw a card, but that's okay. That's okay. We want, we're, It's in here for the mill and then the potential 5k uh, boost. Then we have our super combo at a sparking 5, so we can use this when we have 5 cards in our drop area, which is typically turn 1, turn 2, and we draw a card off that, which is really nice. Uh, we'll get to victory strike last. Kaioken Goku is a U7 card. It's just another body. For two energy, we can neg something with barrier by 25. This can be pretty impactful, depending on the matchup. Uh, for three, we can clear a board of 20k and less. It's pretty nice. Uh, it leaves us kind of open for just taking swings on our next turn, but that's not the uh, worst thing in the world. Then I talked about Rival Seeker already. Um, Vegeta Exploiting Weakness, a lot of people forget this card exists. Uh, if we're playing a defensive build, we're going to have energy open on our turn and on our opponent's turn. 
So we have a lot of options of what to do with it. If we leave energy open on our opponent's turn and we don't really do anything, like turn three, we just pass, we have the option to use Vegeta's Exploiting Weakness. So when our opponent plays down a battle card, we can tap three energy. Uh, it'll come into play, neg our opponent's board by 20k, and then our leader card will get 5,000 power for the turn, possibly making it a 20k body that your opponent has to swing over. Um, can be really, really impactful depending on what your opponent is playing that you are counterplaying. Card's pretty good. It's out of one of. Um, the chance of us actually drawing into it is kind of slim, but it's it's there just in case because it can be really cheeky. Then we have our Vegeta here with the crit. Um, for two energy, we neg two cards with 15k, ignoring barrier. Pretty good. Oh, and draw a card. And we draw a card. That's really important too. So this card for two energy nets a lot of value as soon as it hits the board. It does have deflect. So it will hit the board. Um, and our opponent is forced to respond to this with cards in their hand, which we're not giving them cards. So for two energy, if we end up playing this on turn two, which we really can't because it's a sparking 10. So this typically comes into play around turn three, but we do what we can with it. Um, the Vegeta is really strong. And I do think it's a really valuable card. Uh, it could be bumped up to four, but the deck is already, uh, I think it was at 60. So you're, you're milling a lot with this. We do have our Unison here, Sin Shedron. Um, this card nets a lot of value for us because it can allow all of our cards on board and itself to attack battle cards in active mode. So anything small sitting on board, blockers, um, cards with barrier like Poutine, we can just swing into them and remove them and not have to worry about any threats to our final victory strike swing. Then we have plus one, which negs two cards by 15k. This allows us to hit bigger numbers for negging, such as like a Gogeta uh, thwarting. That's a 25k body, so this would neg 15, and then we can drop a Goku or a Frieza or something to neg it and just finish it off and then not have to worry about it. We can also neg it by 15 and then just swing over it and force our opponent to combo out of that uh, swing. The neg two, look at your opponent's hand, choose up to one battle card, 25k power or less, and discard it. This allows us hand knowledge as well as picking away another super combo from our opponent. So in combination of Sin and Goku, we're ripping two cards of our opponent's hand uh, on the turn that we play down the Goku. If they don't remove the Goku, if we're able to get this off turn four and they don't get rid of it, then we have five energy on the next turn to go into victory strike and do whatever we need to do. For some really odd reason, if you don't awaken by turn four and you can get this play off and then also untap an energy and then go into victory strike would be amazing. I don't think it's really possible. Um, it depends on what you're playing against and how defensive you're actually being with your energy, I guess. So it could be possible. Don't know why you do it, but you know, Invoker didn't awake until it was at like two life. So you do what you got to do. Uh, we do have three testing the opposition. So if we do get down to five life, we do have the option to play out free blockers and negate attacks, which is really nice. Uh, three after image. I did skip over a card. We'll get to that. Uh, after image is also, once we tap out, it provides us a little bit of defense as well as a small negging effect. Um, could be useful, not too sure, but we do expect to tap out. And that's why we want to have the free rival secret super combos in our hand uh, when we're able. Realm of the Gods Ultra Instinct. These cards are just really good. Um, this one in particular, honestly, it is cuttable. Um, I put it in here for the 30k neg. Uh, but the defensive aspect of it is pretty good as well. Draw a card and 15k boost for the battle. It's really good. But you do have to save an energy for it. Uh, and that's why it's more of a defensive card. We have three Violent Rays. If you're playing against Black and they're going to rush you with a bunch of 20k plus bodies, you need to be able to just stop it immediately. And Violent Rays is a really strong option for that. Uh, you could also choose Unison cards with it, but it's less viable. Uh, it also allows you to pitch a card from your hand in order for the effect, so that will fill up our drop area faster and also allow us another way to get rid of Catastrophic Blow if we see it go later in the game and it's just chilling in our hand. Two Freeze of Death Balls. Um, 
15k boost. Uh, all of our energy is going to be red, so we will get the Neg 10 as well. Um, this card kind of is the same thing as the Realm of the Gods, but you don't get to draw the card. So sometimes that 15k draw is better than just a 15k. Matter of opinion, uh, you can swap these out to a 4 or 4 or a 3 1 split. Entirely up to you. King Vegeta's Imposing Presence. This card is fantastic. It's another one just like uh, Violent Rays where you can pitch a card from your hand, which allows you to fill your drop faster, as well as get rid of uh, Catastrophic Blow. So a lot of cards allow us to do that. It's not, not very difficult. But this is kind of like a floodgate for your opponent. Uh, any 15k body they swing up becomes a 10, forcing them to combo. And if we're not attacking their leader and giving them cards from life, they're losing value on every single time they combo because half the time we'll just take the damage if they're swinging at leader. Uh, if they're not swinging at lead, they have to try and clear a board, which is pretty difficult. Two Wolf Ink Fist. Um, the card is really good, but we don't get a unison out until at least turn three. So Wolf Ink Fist being free is really awesome, but the chance of us seeing it after milling so many cards and the chance of us seeing it by the time we have a unison board, kind of slim. Um, could probably be cut from the deck, but overall, it's still really strong. So we put it in here uh, just for another way to neg. So our opponent has to deal with a lot of negging. And uh, this does ignore barrier as well, so it can get around a couple cards. So the last two cards we're going to talk about are uh, Victory Strike and then We Are Universe 7. So if you haven't seen Awaken Power before, card is extremely strong. Um, it's also extremely expensive. So EX Evolve, place one U7 card from your hand in the drop area, which we have plenty of those. And then a Universe 7 Sun Goku with an energy cost of six or more. There are not many of these in the game right now that are actually playable. And I think part of the reason for that is because of this card, because then this card becomes splashable in a ton of different variety of decks. So what makes this so good? It is our secret rare for the deck. Uh, Victory Strike, when you deal damage, you win the game. So one damage, and you win the game. Uh, if you swing at a unison with this, and it deals the damage, it will kill the unison immediately, no matter how many markers it has. Interesting, but you'll, you'll never do that. Uh, permanent, this card's attack and skill cannot be negated. So your opponent has no way to negate the swing, meaning that if you're ripping their cards from their hand, uh, you can just leave the negates there because it doesn't do anything. Um, the only card that does bother me with this, and it's something that we have in like every single deck in the format, uh, is these cards right here. So testing the opposition for red, Chilled's army, Frieza's army, and um, whatever the green one was, Madolchi or whatever. You, you can know what I mean. The, uh, the free counterplay is a play out of blocker. So, they can still counter, the counter effect will resolve, and then they declare blocker. So your opponent has an out to victory strike with their blocker that they just played off of testing the opposition. I believe it works that way. Um, I get kind of confused with the uh, counter, the, the, the timing windows for when all that activates. Um, but I think this card can stop victory strike altogether. Or at least like save him for another turn, but 45k swing forces your opponent to combo a lot of resources, uh, three super combos, and they equal it. But they have to have the three super combos first. Yeah, the card is just really, really good. And when you're already playing out a uh, target for it in your deck, regardless, that you can search off your leader effect to make sure it's in your hand every single time. It's just a really strong combo. Um, I haven't seen anyone try and do it yet. Maybe because they don't own this card. Maybe because the better players just are kind of steering away from this deck. I'm not sure. But if we mill, if we mill this card um, and it ends up in our drop area, then we have to grab it with We Are Universe 7. So this says choose up to one U7 card from your drop area and add it to your hand. And then the other effect, not super important. We are just playing this in case we mill our victory strike. Um, if we don't see this card at all, and we mill this, or we mill all three of these, 
then I guess you're just playing regular U7 and you have to find a way to come back and win the game. Um, it makes it very difficult. So if you if you mill this like your first turn, then you're drawing until you see this card. Because this, this is your out to winning. Um, if you mill this the first turn and you mill both of these shortly after, then I guess you're just playing U7 and you're trying to pressure your opponent with all of our normal U7 fun stuff. Because if you don't see these, you lose the game. But under, like, no situation, are you really feeling pressured? Uh, by turn four, when you play this out, if you play this out, um, like, this isn't your automatic turn four play. You can save this till turn five. You can, if the, you know the game's going to be drawn out, you can go in turn six. At any point, you can push this card onto the board and force your opponent to respond to it, which it has deflect. So they're going to prepare for this card. Um, if by turn five you play this out and they're like, huh, you can't swing for game, well, then they're probably not prepping for victory strike in the first place. So in a best of one format, this deck can 100% sweep your opponent. Uh, if they don't see the victory strike coming, you'll win the game probably 80% of the time. And that's just, if you don't get out aggroed, like, if you see all extra cards in your opening hand, uh, you're going to have defensive power, but, like, Violent Rage is one to gate. If they swing with a bunch of 15Ks, you really can't do anything about it. Um, I don't know. The deck just, in theory, sounded really good. Uh, if you guys have access to all these cards, feel free to try it out. If you need a proxy of Victory Strike, I'm sure people will understand when you're testing. Um, but have fun with it. Uh, Victory Strike doesn't see a lot of play. So if you guys can make this work, I would love to see it because I, I want to try the deck out myself uh, at Locals. It's just a matter of doing it. I guess I'm going to make the video first. So, But good luck in all your guys' games. Hope you enjoyed the deck profile, and I will see you in the next one.